So this is my story again, right? So I'm basically this is this is this is you know COVID, right? This is you know you know we were in the, we were in you know COVID whatever. Um, or better yet, no, this this starts back in March, March of twenty. Uh, what was it? March of twenty twenty. Right. This is like like during the week of my birthday or whatever. And I remember me and a friend or a friend and I, we were basically um, about to leave the leave my apartment to go somewhere. <laughs> we were about to go somewhere. Right. And then next thing you know, I hear this woman come into the hallway and she's screams into the hallway someone called the police he hit me someone called the police now originally my original thought was i don't normally react right away to certain things because i'm like sometimes you never know what kind of situation is going on you know you never know if they probably actually just playing in the hallway whatever the case may be boom my friend, you know, she's actually been in a domestic violence situation before. So she's like, Chris, I think you should go and check it out. You know, you know, I don't play that shit. You know, you need to go and, you know, see what's happening out there. So I'm like, all right. So I go and I stick my head out the out the door and I'm looking at the situation. And it's like three dudes, uh, older woman and one of the and a, and a younger woman. Right probably about like like they all look like they're in like their you know their late 20s and then the uh, older woman looked like she's probably the um the mother of one of the one of them whatever right and next thing you know um he's like holding the younger woman's phone and she's yelling like give me my phone give me my phone and I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm just standing back looking at the situation. And my friend, she comes from behind me. She's like, girl, you all right? Hey, he did something to you. And then she, she's like, she's like, Chris, let me get your phone so I can call the police. And she says that she's seen blood on the woman's hand, on the younger woman's hand. And I'm like, I didn't see it myself. I don't know. I didn't see it myself. So now I'm like, okay. Um, I found it kind of weird that she asked for my phone because I was like this this my friend she always on her damn phone she always got her phone with her but for whatever reason she asked for my phone so I'm like okay so I give her my phone she calls the police whatever you know and then next thing you know um the dude he gives um the woman that he's arguing with back her phone and um you know funny thing is the older woman she comes she walks over to me and she apologizes um, and I'm like, I'm like, you know, it's, it's okay. You know, we live in New York. There's always some, there's always some type of, um, situation going on. So I'm like, no need to apologize, you know? So now, um, whatchamacallit. So whatchamacallit, my friend, she finishes calling the police for the, for the, um, for the younger woman. I was like, you know, screaming for help and whatnot. Um, she, the, the younger woman goes downstairs, me and my friend, we be, we basically go back in our apartment. We like, yo, that was crazy. I don't know what was going on, blah, blah, blah. About 10, 15 minutes later, I hear like what sounds like, you know, um, hand radios and stuff. So I'm like, oh, that must be the police. So I go and I look through the peephole and I see her walking back to the apartment. Um, not my apartment, but the apartment she was coming from. And, um... Which I'm gonna call it. I see her walking back to the apartment, and there's like three cops walking behind her, and I'm just like, "Oh snap!" Um, so this is really about to go down. I was like, "Oh shit!" So now, um, I don't see nobody come out the apartment with like handcuffs. And I I didn't watch long enough for all that, you know. I mean, I tell you the truth, I kind of really didn't want to care. Um, because I didn't see him laying hands on her or, you know, I didn't really see like a real physical struggle or anything. So I didn't really see a need for me to actually physically get involved. Right. You know, um, some people might say, Chris, you a bitch for that. But I'm like, I don't know if I didn't see a physical, like, you know, if I didn't see anything physical going on, and it was just a verbal argument, then I'm just letting that shit flow anyway. 
So, um, next thing you know, um, which I'm gonna call it, let's say fast forward, like fast forward a couple of months, right? Now we're in like October of 2020. And it's some night that I'm actually walking. Uh, I, don't, I don't even know where I was coming from, but I was walking back to my building and there was these like four dudes, you know, stand sitting outside in like a group um and they was like they was like huddled up in the group and then you know i was i think i had lost my glasses or something that day whatever i don't remember what happened but i couldn't really see who was in the group whatever and then as i'm walking to the door to open the door i hear one of them yell out this gay ass nigga and i'm like the fuck so i'm like i'm like they can't be talking about me so i, I just ignore it and i go back into the building right and then, um, I think uh, one night, not that same night, but it was some other night, still in October, um, I'm sitting in my crib, you know, I'm having a little, you know, having my little drinks or whatever. I had, a, you know, I had my little sips or whatever. I'm watching the movie. Oh, I was watching a show, and it's funny because I was watching this show about demon possessions and stuff called uh, Evil. Um, and uh, uh, as interesting as it sounds, the premise of the show was about a priest, a computer tech specialist, and a psychiatrist or a psychologist, right? And what they do is they go and find, they go to these, um, these, uh, I guess you could say these, these homes or these these areas where there's be, been these uh, reported incidences where they think it's, uh, you know, um, some type of um, demonic situation or whatever. Like the Catholic priest sends, the Catholic church sends out a priest to go and um, check out this, 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 uh, this situation to see if it's, if it's actually a spiritual and demonic thing that actually needs the church involved or, you know, they got the, um, the tech guy to see if it's maybe it's just some technological stuff going on right now get this i'm sitting in my 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 apartment you know by myself and all of a sudden i start hearing this voice <laughs> i start hearing this voice and it sounded like it was coming through the walls so i'm bugging out right i'm hearing this voice and this voice is going yeah, I'm going to just go ahead and take this out since the um, train's showing up. So I'm hearing this voice. And this voice is like, oh, we're going to shoot you in your sleep. And I'm like, the fuck? And it's like, we're going to shoot you in your sleep. So I'm like, you know, this is my first apartment, you know, living by myself, whatever. So I'm like... Who the hell is saying this and why am I hearing it so clearly? And they just continue going, we're going to shoot you in the seat. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. So, I'm trying to wrap my mind around this thing and I'm like, yo, ain't nobody going to do shit to me in my sleep. So, I look out the window, I don't see nobody outside, so I go outside. I take a walk around to see if I can find somebody walking around. But I don't see nobody outside. So I come back upstairs, right? And then next thing you know, um, I hear the voice go, we told you you're not going to find us. And I'm like, oh, snap, what the hell is going on? And then I start looking all all around my apartment trying to see if I can find like a, like some type of speaker or something or a camera. Uh, I'm looking. I'm looking in the I'm looking at the intercom. I'm looking at the the um, the fire. The, the, you know the, the smoke detector. I'm looking everywhere that I can, and I can't find nothing. Right. So I'm like, all right. Let me just go ahead and um, I'm gonna just go to sleep. Maybe I could just sleep this off. I don't know. Maybe I just need to stop watching scary scary shows or whatever. I wake up the next morning. And the voices are still there. 
And I'm like, yo, I'm like, I know I'm not bugging. I know I'm not going crazy. Why am I hearing voices that's not my voice in my head? So I'm like, all right, you know what? Let me go to my mom's crib because, you know, she she's like a heavy, heavy Christian. She believes in prayer and stuff like that. So I'm like, I'm going to go to my mom's crib, tell her what I'm going through, and then, you know, have her pray for me, right? I get to my mom's crib, and I kid you not, I start to tell her what's going on, and all of a sudden I hear the same voice that I heard saying it was going to shoot me in my sleep. As I'm telling my mom's a story, I hear his voice go he's snitching and i'm like what the fuck is going on i'm like why am i hearing that voice that same voice all the way the same voice i heard from my house all the way at my mother's house so now i'm bugging out i'm like yo i think i need to go and get a psychological evaluation because i think like i'm really like like going through something now so boom um so boom i'm like okay i go and i spend the night at my mom's house whatever she prayed for me and everything and i'm still hearing the voices though you know and they're like oh you snitching now so now now we going now we definitely going to shoot you and your mother and i'm like oh what the fuck so I get the idea and I'm like, see, I don't live, I don't live that close to my mom. So I'm like, what I decided I was going to do, I, I sent the text to my cousin. And I was like, yo, cuz, um, I need you to keep an eye on my mom's because there's some weird shit going on. Somebody talking about they going to do something to my mother. So this is, you know, my mother's address. And, you know, just to let you know, if, if anything go down, just let me know because I don't live out here no more. So now I'm basically like, you know, um, trying to go to sleep and I wake up the next morning at my mom's, my mom's, you know, place and I'm still hearing the voices talking about some, you a snitch ass nigga, we gonna do this to you, we gonna do that to you. So I'm like, you know what, let me just go to the hospital, right? I'm gonna go to the hospital and I'm gonna, you know, try to see if I could like, get a psyche valve or something maybe maybe there's something wrong with my hearing or, or something happened to my you know i don't know you know i don't know what's going on i kid you not as i'm walking to the hospital i'm hearing the voices starting to get even more and more aggressive talking about some don't stop walking to the hospital don't go to the hospital you're trying to snitch on you're about to be a, become a real snitch da 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 you keep you go to the hospital you're gonna become a snitch it's gonna be over for you and i'm like what the fuck and i'm like nah so i start walking faster <laughs> so now i get to the hospital but as i'm about to get to the hospital right as i'm about to walk into the hospital there's these three dudes standing outside of the hospital right this is still like october of 2020 there's these three dudes standing outside of the hospital, right? And as I'm walking up these, like these, like, like three or four steps, um, to go to the, uh, to go into the hospital, I could feel like their eyes watching me go into the hospital. And then as I pass them, they start laughing. I hear them laughing behind me. So I'm just like, yo, what the fuck is going on? So I'm like, all right, whatever. So now I go and I, and I tell them, I'm like, look, I need to go in for a psyche eval. Um, Cause you know, I was honest with them. Uh, I was like, look, I had smoked some weed. And then next thing you know, I started hearing voices. And then, uh, what you call it? Um, what you call it? So, you know, uh, I had told the nurse that. So here's where it gets truly, truly weird, right? The nurse gets up from her chair. She takes a deep sigh and then she gets up from her chair. And then she says, follow me and walks me to a different part of the ER, right? Now this other part of the ER is 
much more crowded. I mean, it's like full of patients in bed, a bunch of visitors, a bunch of doctors, people moving around very fast, quickly. Everybody's doing their own thing, right? She turns to this 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 desk, like like it looked like the receptionist desk with all the with other nurses and doctors and whatever. And she's like, now tell them what you told me. And I'm looking around, I'm like, it's kind of crowded in here for me to be talking about what I just told you in front of all these people like that. But, you know, um, so I'm like, okay. So I told him, I was like, you know, I had, you know, I, I was smoking weed, you know, and then next thing you know, I started hearing voices. And I kid you not, every single person in that damn hospital stopped what they were doing and just looked at me. It was almost like something out of a movie scene. Like, like, like if you had, like, it was almost as if, like, when a director says, cut, and everybody stopped what they were doing and just looked at me, and then they just resumed, like nothing, like nothing happened. So I was like, yo, what the hell just happened? You know, so I'm like, okay, now, there's definitely something wrong going on here, right? Now, um, okay, so now um, I get admitted, you know, for like the 24-hour observation, whatever, right? So now, um, I'm in, you know, I'm in the, um, I'm in the, the, the ward or whatever, right? And there's about like, uh, it was just this kind of like medium-sized room um with like i think like five five or six patients whatever in there and i'm like damn this 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 definitely looked like a sight ward like everybody in here looked like they going through something that they probably have no control over whatever you know or at least it seemed that way at first but then the longer i kind of sat in there i started to realize i think all these people know each other this ain't the first time these people seen each other before because it seemed like they were all having conversations with each other like like they know each other and then like even on top of that the nurses and doctors that was um like i guess surveilling everybody seemed like they knew everybody that was in in that psych ward you know um as if like it definitely wasn't their first time being there and then i kid you not i'm still hearing the voices I'm still hearing the voices, even when I went to like the bathroom, I'm still hearing them in there. And um, then there was at one point, uh, while it was still daytime, um, I guess doctors were doing rounds or whatever, right? So I go uh, and sit down on this like this 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 little um, um, lazy boy chair, or whatever, and. Um, one of the other, um, I guess, patients, he sits in another one, like, right next to me. And so the doctors are doing their rounds and they're trying to, you know, they're like, you know, it, um, they they get, the, they, they ask the patient what's their name and their reason for being there. And um, I'm sitting there and, and the doctor's like, um, so what's your name? I'm like, I tell him my name. And then they're like, so, and what's your reason for being here? And I was like, well, to be completely honest, I was smoking weed. And then next thing you know, I started hearing voices and the voices never left. And as I'm saying it, right? One of the patients that was sitting, sitting to the, uh, to the right side of me, he's sitting there with his hands like kind of folded and he's flicking something in his hand. Now I know that sound. It sounded like he had a razor blade in his hand. And then as I said that I was hearing voices, he mumbles under his breath, he's snitching. And he don't even know I got the razor blade on me. And then he gets up and walks off, right? And then I'm like, what the hell just happened? And I'm like, yo, what is going on? So I'm like, okay, I'm not going to sleep now. <laughs> And it's funny because um, when it, when the nighttime came and everything, the doctors expecting everybody to go to sleep. I'm not going to sleep. 
Because I don't trust nobody in this hospital now, right? I don't trust nobody in this hospital. Um, I'm trying to make sure this don't go to go over like 25 minutes. But um, so I'm like bumped that I'm not going to sleep. They try to give me a pill to see if it could calm me down. Hell no, I didn't take that damn pill. Um, at least I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't take that pill. So, cause I, I didn't trust, I didn't trust nobody. I didn't trust the doctors. I didn't trust none of the patients. I didn't trust nobody in it. So, um, long story short, I leave that hospital. Um, and then I think like the next day I go to a different hospital. Experience is much different, but, um, in this situation, now, I'm not around a bunch of other patients, right? You know, the second hospital I went to treated me with a little bit more, I guess I could say respect. And then um, the second hospital, you know, I get like a space in, in like basically like almost it felt like a, like a private area or whatever, you know, it seemed a little bit more chill. But the weirdest, the weirdest part was it seemed like everybody working for the hospital was a part of this weird ass agenda and they were basically like mumbling or saying things subliminally about how they were going to do things to me right like and i'm talking like do stuff like you know try to like debilitate me in some type of way and um i remember at one point um I was basically uh, trying to go to sleep and I smelt this this cologne and I smelt this cologne before it was one of the people that probably does like the patient transfers or whatever I'm laying down on the bed and my back is turned and there was a chair behind me behind me next to the bed and I could smell his cologne <laughs> and the funny thing is as I'm smelling his cologne um which I'm call it I hear the voices go I hear the voices go, um, yo, you need to stop talking. You need to stop talking to me. You need to stop telling people we're gonna punch you in the we're gonna punch you in the back of your neck. You keep talking about it, we're gonna punch you in the back of your neck. You know, and you don't realize your mother's snitching on everybody and I'm like, what the hell? And I'm like, what the hell is going on? You gotta take next step. This one so, so I'm like, yo, what is going on? So now I'm just like, okay, at this point I realize I can't trust no hospitals. <laughs> because I don't like 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 I didn't know what was going on. I can't trust no hospitals. Nobody in the medical field is necessarily gonna be able to help me for what's going on because I feel like there's a conspiracy going on. Now, I leave the hospital, they try to say that I was depressed. I didn't feel depressed. They try to, you know, make it seem like I was probably showing signs of paranoid schizophrenia. I didn't, I, I know what schizophrenics look like and I damn sure didn't feel like no damn paranoid schizophrenic. I get home and I was like, okay, God, I have no idea what's happening. So I'm gonna need you to guide me into into some information so I can finally understand what's going on. I get home and I, I'm calming myself down. And then it just dawns on me. I'm like, let me just look online and see if I can find something, right? I look online and I type in, you know, people hearing voices, right? Now, one of the first things they bring up is paranoid schizophrenia. And then I start to see some other things pop up something called voice to skull and i'm like what the hell is voice to skull so i'm looking into it and it, it starts to sound a lot more like it's not necessarily anything about demonic possession or whatever but it's like technology and i'm like technology so i start to think about it and then like the voices are still continuing and he's like see he was like see since you since you snitched to the doctors about us, now you might as well become a cop. You might as well become a cop since you a snitch now. And I'm like, that don't make no sense because I ain't snitch on nobody. I ain't never been a snitch in my life. And I don't, I don't know, I don't know shit about anything anyway. And then on top of that, I started to 
really pay attention to it. And then, you know, through the research, I was finding out like, okay, this is technology. So then I started listening to the voices again. And I was like, wait a minute. I recognize these voices from somewhere. I recognize them from somewhere. Boom. I thought of an image of a person's face. <laughs> and I kid you not, I thought of an image of a person's face. And I think the first one that I thought of, it was it because was, it was not just one voice. It was probably like three or four, three or four people. And uh, one of them was a woman. <laughs> and um, as I'm listening to the voice, I said, wait a minute, I heard that voice before. And then I thought of a face that I know I heard that voice come from. And all of a sudden I heard the dude's voice, one of the dude's voice go, yo, stop thinking about my girl. And I was like, oh, I know I've seen these people before. I kid you not, I kid you not. One, I thought of a face and then I realized these motherfuckers live in my building. <laughs> And then that's when I just started to really go hard on the research. I really started going hard. And then I found out this is some like, like, like some technological stuff that like, I just, I, hell, I never knew anything about it. You know, my 32 years of living, I ain't never, like, I used to study conspiracy theory stuff. Like, I kind of heard about like, you know, voices or whatever but you know some things when you read on a, on a conspiracy website you don't you don't necessarily take it with a grain of salt but then to actually realize i'm actually experiencing this shit live <laughs> i'm just like yo this is crazy so yeah you know long story short that's basically my story like that's that's basically how i came to realize that okay I'm being targeted. Um, they, they're telling me that he was never supposed to be a target. He was supposed to become a police officer. Um, me personally, I can't see myself becoming a cop because if someone's remote neural monitoring me, then that means they're seeing everything. Well, this is what I learned through the research. They're seeing everything I see, hearing everything I hear, which means it would jeopardize the lives of other cops, right? You know, cause not every cop is bad. So if I'm being remote neural monitored, that means that would literally jeopardize, you know, good people from doing their jobs properly. And ever since I chose not to actually go, you know, go through with becoming a cop, they basically just been, you know, using their frequencies um, to try to manipulate my emotions, um, extract information from my, from my mind. Um, you know, they've been doing like everything, including, um, you know, basically, basically, you know, um, using direct energy attacks on me. I mean, everything from like, you know, um, hitting certain parts of my, my body, including like my knees, my hips, my, you know, my, my genitalia. They, they love going for my genitalia. <laughs> um wrecked them and then i realized i started you know through some other research i realized you can you know because every cell in the body has carries a frequency you can actually cause cells you can actually send you can actually cause cells to become cancerous using you know the right type of uh frequency to cause the cell vibrate to a point where it's basically you know either destroying its very own dna structure or or you know I, I can't really explain i don't i'm not a technological person like that but um i have the patents i have the scientific studies you know i've seen the uh the websites and everything um and i'm not talking like like you know you know cuckoo bird websites i'm talking like 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 nature.com i'm talking like on um, wired i'm talking you know um like real peer review you know scientific studies and stuff like that so yeah this is my this is my story and i'm off to work